Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. Now what I have for you today is a very special video on my survival instructor bag loadout. Next weekend is the Advanced Survival course at the Pathfinder School out in Ohio, and I'll be acting as primary instructor. And these are all the items that I'm going to bring with me to the field. Not only do we teach and instruct at the school, but we also survive out in the field right next to our students as we teach and instruct. So we need to be prepared for that. Now, if you're interested in any of the gear you see in the video, please check out the description box below and all the links. You'll find all the gear there if you're so inclined. Of special note, we have a drinking game for today. Every time you hear me say in the field or field, you've got to take a drink because it's the game of the day. Good luck, guys. Now let's start with the outside of the bag. I am a little OCD because I don't like having things hanging off the outside of my bag, but I do like Sustainment pouches or side pouches to put different items or kits. So this is where a lot of those larger items that we're going to use more frequently are going to go. Larger tools as well as canteens or filters for water collection out in the field. Now that first item on the outside of the pack is a larger tool. Just like on the opposite side, it's the axe or the hatchet. This time it's a saw. That saw is going to be the most efficient cutting tool that we can take into the woods with us. It can go in not only a survival instructor bag, but our day bag, a survival bug out bag, or a rucksack, or if we're going to the field for an extended period of time. The saw is one of the more efficient tools. And a simple folding saw, or even a buck saw like this one, a Borealis 21 inch, is going to be perfect for taking down material because we don't really have to take down that large of material. Anything from three to five inches in diameter is perfect for this type of saw. Plus, I tend to snap off the tips of folding saws when I use them, so having a buck saw is just an extra precaution for me out in the field. This one folds up nice, plus it comes with an extra heavy-duty blade that we can use not only for wood harvesting, but also for processing game. Next item right behind that saw is our Grail Geopress with its nesting cup. This way we have basically a complete water survival kit right there on that side of our pack. We have the Grail that we can use to treat water and filter that water within 15 seconds after collection to make it safe to drink so we can rehydrate on the move very easily. Plus that nesting cup gives us the ability to take water again and place it over a fire to boil that water, treat it, and make it safe to drink. So we have basically a water survival treatment kit right here on this side of our instructor pack that we can take and go. Plus we can grab this, throw it in our haversack if we're on the move. As we flip this pack around, you notice that the items on the exterior of the pack and those side pouches are relatively similar in size and or shape as well as use. We have tools and containers on the outside because we're going to grab those large tools to harvest material off the landscape or shape things quite frequently. And we have canteens and water filters on the outside because we're going to be grabbing and filling up on water every chance we get. That next large tool, however, is a Camp Carver from Council Tool. This is a woodcraft pack axe that is relatively small, about 17 inch handle, 1.7 pound head, and it's a very sharp carving axe that we can use not only to harvest material off the landscape, but then shape tools and wood. And just like the other side, behind that hatchet or that small forest axe is going to be a canteen and nesting cup. Just the bottle set, a basic bottle set that I think I've had for going on about 10 years now but this thing is well used it's on the outside we can fill it up with water plus we can use this for just about every task we're going to need a metal container for from cooking boiling water to creating char material superheating it inside the canteen itself or just simply keeping this full of water on the outside of our pack if we leave it back at camp and take our haversack with us we can grab the bottle quickly place it in the haversack and move out there is a small pouch on the bottom front of this type of pack and per SOP, standard operating procedure for instructors out at the Pathfinder School, we typically keep extra medical gear in this little pouch, things like tourniquets, bandages, and medical trauma items that we're going to need to treat a casualty and stop bleeding right away. Now it's shooter's preference on how the instructors pack their bags typically, as long as we all have generally the same things, especially the medical care items so we can treat students if they happen to go down in the field or suffer an injury. But we have the top of this bag where it's got that cinch draw that we can roll down and actually tighten with a clip and keep it secure. But we open this up, the things on top are going to be those smaller items that we're going to need right away first thing in the morning. A haversack to place more items in. We've got our instructor cap as well as a couple of drum liners 
three mil, about 55 gallons in total volume that we can use for a variety of things. To those basic items, we're gonna have our knives. Typically, a primary and an alternate knife is recommended. That way we have two knives going out into the field. We're gonna have our primary knife that's gonna be on our belt, on our hip, the entirety of the course, and it's gonna be our go-to blade. However, if we have something happen to that primary blade, we lose it, drop it somewhere, it becomes too dull to work with, and we don't have our sharpening kit with us, or a maintenance kit, or we chip it, or it snaps on us, whatever happens to that primary knife, we typically have that alternate knife. And both of these knives are gonna give us the same characteristics, high carbon steel, 90 degree spine. It's gonna get that Scandi grind so we can actually carve and create fine cuts with it. All these knives are gonna do everything for us. And when we have two, two is one, and one is none, so we bring primary and alternate out into the field to survive right along the students. Next is going to be just a basic hygiene kit. We still have to maintain hygiene. We could use primitive methods for that, but having a basic hygiene kit is great. Toothbrush, toothpaste, some bottom wipes that are biodegradable, as well as some deodorant. Because at first I wasn't sure, but now I am. After that hygiene kit, we have our shemag, our wool cap that we can wear, especially as the sun goes down and through the night when temperatures begin to drop and we're in our survival shelter. We have extra clothing we can put on to stay warm. And then we have the one quart bush pot right on top that we can grab and fill with water and hang it right over a fire once that's started at camp. Big fan of having multiple smaller metal containers as part of a survival kit, especially as an instructor, because we have multiple ways to carry water and we're still carrying a great deal of volume in our kit so we can stay hydrated. But then we have multiple containers that we can cook in, boil water in, make food, medicines, as well as char material, and then continue to store or transfer water from container to container. So this type of method of carrying multiple smaller containers, especially around the one quart volume size, means that we still have the ability to treat water with chemical means as well to make it safe to drink out in the field, whether we're demoing that or we're actually surviving and filling up from a stream. Next is one of the most important sub kits as part of our overall survival kit, especially instructing, and that's going to be our fire kit we take into the field. That first item right on top is just a simple lighter, bright orange so we can see it, but that lighter is the first thing we're going to go to to get a fire going out in the field. After that, we have man-made tinder. Having man-made tinder, not only to demonstrate another way to start fire in the field or get a fire going quickly, but especially if it's a winter skills course or a cold weather course, we have a way to get an emergency fire going very, very quickly with man-made tinder. That way we can warm up not only ourselves, but students who may be suffering some sort of cold weather injury. After that, we have just a basic solar lens or magnification lens that we can use to harness the sun's rays, a Fresnel lens or Fresnel lens, and get tinder ignited quickly to demonstrate solar ignition. One other thing we can carry as part of a fire kit is a candle. A candle does several things for us out in survival as well as for demonstration's sake as an instructor. But the candle, we can use a beeswax candle that will last a lot longer than a typical paraffin wax candle. But we can also use it to light the darkness, drive the boogeyman away. We can use it to heat the interior of a shelter to keep it warm. And we can use a candle to act as a flame extender once we get tinder lit to take that flame, apply it to a fire, and get that fire going we can then remove the candle blow it out and save it for later many uses for a candle and it goes inside our fire kit also included in the kit is a small piece of fat wood that we can make shavings with and ignite to get a fire going and we can replenish this by finding red pine in the area we also have matches in our match safe brightly colored yet again matches are still a viable option to get a fire going in the field and having multiple and different ways to start fires gives us that much more of an opportunity. After that, we have our flint and steel kit, just a piece of high carbon steel that can also act as a bearing block for a bow drill set, and a hard rock, a piece of chert that we can drive sparks off of to ignite charred material because charred material is taught to students, so we can use this to actually get a fire going as well. And then we have the primary fire or ignition source as part of our kit, and that's that six inch by half half inch ferro rod. This one had in the kit for 
almost 20 years now. But this one has been struck so many times it's still good and we can use this with the 90 degree edge of our spine of our knife to get tinder ignited out in a survival situation. Great for students as well. Easy to handle. That last thing is going to be just a simple cotton cloth orange material that we can use for whatever cotton cloths can be used for. To wipe sweat, clean off lenses, to use as char, superheated in a fire, or we can use it as a waypoint marker for land navigation or as a pre-water filter. We can also place this in the bottom of that ditty bag to protect all the components of our fire kit inside that leather ditty bag while we're on the move. After all of those items, the very next item is another container. This happens to be just the canteen cup cook set that we can carry at least three quarts of water total as part of this entire kit. Now, the first thing inside the pouch itself is going to be just that lid that we can put over the actual nesting cups. So we can cook inside the nesting cup very easily. We have the bottle itself, 32 ounces, although filling it up to the brim is going to be slightly over 32 ounces, but a way to carry more water out in the field. Plus, it fits in the haversack very, very well, keeping it flat if we just go with the haversack and we move out with students and leave the rucksack behind. But then we have that nesting cup with the old GI handle. And underneath that, as part of a, another nesting configuration, is the stand or the cook stand for the cup itself or even the bottle. That stand goes in the fire over the embers and then we can just place the actual cup on top of that to keep it above the flames to allow it to boil and cook more efficiently, whether we're boiling water, cooking food, or superheating char material, whatever we need, it's there for us in the fire, ready to go. And now we're going to get into the larger items that are larger but still more light in weight. They're going to go near the bottom of the rucksack, get a little bit more cushion, plus they're the things we're going to need last at the end of the day when setting up our shelter, and that's our shelter material itself. That first item out is going to be our ground stake so we can actually stake out our tarp or whatever we need to. And then we have our hammock bug net combo that we're going to use to string up a shelter, sleep in a hammock, and have a bug net over top to keep the mosquitoes out at night. After that, a tarp. We're going to have that tarp that we're going to put over the shelter to make it waterproof as well as keep the rain off and have just a nice little consolidated space to keep body heat and a nice little microclimate. Then we have a blow-up pad to stay warm in inside the actual hammock and our swagman roll to go over top. The hammock is probably the most efficient type of shelter to hang up in the field. It's also the one of the most comfortable. It's easy to put up, easy to construct, but it keeps us up off the ground away from bugs. And with the right equipment, we can stay warm in there and have a comfortable night's sleep so we can keep pushing the next day. With this hammock setup, we have our straps to actually hang up the shelter itself. But we also have a quick deploy ridge line or a second one in our kit to go underneath the tarp of our shelter over top of the hammock to actually hang up that bug net to keep it suspended above the hammock so we have that nice microclimate inside that we can zip up and keep the bugs away. This packs up very nice, very efficient type of shelter with little setup and teardown time so we can keep moving in the field and keep instructing. The whole point of this entire setup is to be as lightweight as possible, but still as comfortable as possible in the field to get a good night's sleep. One of the most important parts of our shelter kit is going to be that tarp because that tarp goes up over the shelter, keeps everything underneath of it dry, and we can also use this tarp for a variety of bushcraft and survival uses, everything from backpacks or pack frames to collecting rainwater for hydration. But that tarp needs to be a good solid setup to go up very quickly over top of our hammock and our shelter area. So we've included another quick deploy ridge line, the updated version with those toggles. We have bungee cords for quick stakeouts to go along with our ground stakes if we don't actually have a tie out somewhere or a natural tie out. And then we also have guy lines as part of that shelter or that tarp system because we can use these not only at four corners but above our shelter as well for any type of tarp or shelter configuration in the field as well as instructing the students those types of shelters. And then after that we have our swagman roll that we can use to roll up in in any place. It is water resistant as well so it makes a nice shelter if we're without everything else to stay warm in. And then we even have that small ground pad. That ground pad goes inside the hammock to help reduce convection or body heat loss from air underneath the shelter. After all of that, in the main compartment of the pack, the last things at the bottom of the rucksack are going to be food items, typically drink mixes, as well as snacks and 
backpacker meals or stowaway meals like the ones we have here. These meals and all the drinks can go in the bottom because it's the last thing we're going to need. At the end of the day, the first thing we're going to need waking up, and it's the first thing that's going to get packed up as we get ready for the day. So it makes sense to have these items on bottom in the pack. Then we have the top sustainment pouch or that top compartment that sits over top of the entire pack itself the lid if you will this is going to have all of our miscellaneous items the smaller items we're still going to use on a routine basis and we can begin that with a set of gloves one of the items to go in the kit just to help us eat a meal is just a simple usgi mess spoon a variety of uses for the mess spoon but keeping a mess spoon so we can actually shovel food into our faces without using our dirty nasty hands or having to make a spoon off the landscape next we have just different lengths of cordage paracord and bank line and then after that just a set of carving tools a hook knife and a carving knife to make things off the landscape Multiple blades and tools are incredibly important, so having a folding knife or a Swiss Army knife like this Ranger Grip 78 we can place inside our pockets. And a lot of these items are going to go in our pockets, carry with us as we move through the field and conduct training throughout the day. But a pocket knife is a great thing to have as part of our kit. Another sort of folding knife or pocket knife that we can carry is a multi-tool. We should probably carry both a folding knife and then some sort of multi-tool on our person in addition to a belt knife. That belt knife is going to be for larger tasks out in the field, but a multi-tool or a small folding knife is going to be for those small, intricate, everyday tasks. To keep our tools in tip-top shape while we're out there for the duration of that advanced course, just a small sharpening stone with a fine and coarse side that we can use to keep our tools sharp and continue to use them. Some of the last few items that are going to go in this top pouch are going to be, again, utility items that we can take out, either throw in our pockets or wear around our necks. The first one being a headlamp, and here we have two different styles of headlamps, one that can be recharged via solar charger or solar panel, USB cord plugged into the wall, and then one that takes batteries. Remember, two is one, one is none, so having two headlamps in case one fails is good for survival. And then after that, we have just land navigation items. Items. We have our compass with a signaling mirror, pace beads, and whistle attached, as well as a protractor and then a notebook for land navigation. All of these items are going to be packed back up just as we unpack them. We start with those food items and everything that can go on bottom of our rucksack that we're not going to really use throughout the day. Of course, we'll have snacks and we'll have other things available, but those large food items like the backpacker's meals can go right in bottom because we're not going to need them until the end of the day. Same with shelter. And then as we continue to move up from within the rucksack, we put out those items that are going to be needed routinely or for special consideration or training events. And so we have everything packed where we can grab it throughout the day, whatever we need to, access it easily. And then at the end of the day, we can get into the bottom of that rucksack, grab out the larger items for camping and for setting up our shelter and then actually making a meal in the field. We carry... First aid kits because every instructor is wilderness first aid certified. I'm also TCCC and carry this kit not only for myself but for students if I have to treat them in the field. On the outside we just have a carabiner with some tape for easy access as well as a chem light with paracord as an impromptu. On top of the kit is an EpiPen to treat allergic reactions that can be quite deadly especially far removed in a remote wilderness setting. And then we have a eight foot section of tubular nylon webbing to use as a casualty drag to pull a casualty away from a dangerous area. We have another tourniquet so this is two tourniquets now that we can use on ourselves or on a casualty to stop catastrophic bleeding and save someone's life within a few minutes and then we have a ace bandage we can use to wrap over top of other bandages to secure them in place among other uses as well as a SAM splint to immobilize a fractured limb and begin treatment. 
All instructors are CPR certified through the Red Cross as well. So having a CPR face mask as part of the kit, sterilized in a sterile plastic bag, is incredibly important as well to save someone's life out in the field. We carry a variety of dressings to treat different injuries. So we have an Israeli dressing or a pressure dressing to put on top of a laceration to stop bleeding. An old school field dressing for a variety of uses. We have combat gauze we can pack into a wound and help stop the bleeding at its source. As well as a military cravat to be used for a wide variety of medical needs. As part of my kit, I carry a 14 gauge needle as part of a chest needle decompression kit to treat tension pneumothorax. That needle is part of my airway kit or the kit to restore an airway to a casualty due to a variety of different issues, typically something to the thoracic cavity or some sort of damage. On top of that, there's a nasopharyngeal to open an airway if there's mouth trauma of some sort, and then a chest seal to go over top of a penetrating chest wound to seal it up. On the other side, away from airway and bleeding kits, we have cutting devices to strip away clothing like combat shears, cut away clothing from wounds as long as that clothing's not stuck to the wound or there's no burns present so we can identify the actual injury and treat it, as well as an additional folding knife for the same thing or for other cutting tasks to treat a casualty. Underneath that, we have a small casualty blanket or mylar blanket that we can use to wrap around a casualty and keep that casualty warm, especially if that casualty has sustained severe blood loss. That's going to lower the core body temperature, so we want to maintain body temperature. We also have sutures, so we can sew up a laceration. And then we have gloves after that to put on gloves and remain safe. Then underneath all of that, we have just a small syringe plunger we can use to flush an IV, or we can use to irrigate some sort of laceration or wound to get all of the debris out of that wound. We have a Sharpie pen that we can use to actually write on the casualty, write on a piece of clothing, or take notes on our treatment, as well as glucose for anyone who needs sugar. And then we have just a small zippered pouch about the size of a wallet as part of this kit as well. This is where all the routine items are going to go. Everything we use every day on a routine basis from small band-aids that we can wrap around a small cut or laceration to fingers or digits to moleskin to treat blisters on the feet or take a look at feet as well as small tools such as razors, tweezers, safety pins, anything that's routine to fix up a bandage that we've already administered or applied to a casualty and to keep it on the casualty as well as medications to treat individuals out in the field. Basic medications such as aspirin, allergy medicine, anti-diarrhea medicine, electrolytes, it all goes in this kit. Much as we did with our rucksack or our main instructor pack, with this individual first aid kit or personal first aid kit used by instructors to treat out in the field, we pack it up much the same way we did as we packed our rucksack in a certain order. Those large bleeding medical treatment devices are going to be on top as well as things for routine medical treatment as well. Those are going to be closer to the top because we're most likely to use them first. All right, guys, that does it for this video. Very basic, down and dirty video gear dump today on my instructor survival kit, the items I'm going to take to the advanced course here this next weekend, as well as medical aid items, not only for myself, but for surviving out in the field with the students and demonstrating and instructing survival skills at the advanced course. So I hope you like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.